That's right, we've been there, and if we haven't been there, we're going there, you can be sure. This is a national television program, and all of the nation needs to be covered, and we want to cover, and in fact, the Arctic, which uh, sometimes is neglected, is not being neglected this morning. As I said, Lorna Duick has come our way. Welcome, Lorna. Thank you, Jim. Our viewers, uh, of course, know you so well from Huntley Street Pass, but also from your uh, very relevant TV show, uh, Listen Up. The program's doing very well. But you found yourself in the Arctic recently. How did that happen? Sometimes there are news stories where you just think, I must find out if God was all over this story. And of course, God's all over everything. Colossians 3, the earth is everything the Lord has created and he's in it. And um, we, we watched with interest the story of a dramatic rescue that happened of a teenager, 17-year-old teenager, Jupi Angatulak. And um, my producer got busy on the phone saying, I, I, I'm sure there's Christian connection that was praying for this boy. So we went up to Coral Harbor where the landscape is barren. Coral Harbor is far north of Churchill, Manitoba. And uh, it's well past the tree line. And this is what we found as we went up there and how people I'm are connecting there, with God. It's between me and God, constant, and the land. Me, God, and the land. It, we get very close to God. Sometimes you're traveling, you're constantly praying to God, talking to God, and at the same time, watching the land. It's a very good relationship. Me, God, land. Noah Kaluchik and his friends took that conviction of the reality of God with them when they found themselves battling a crisis caused by climate change. This ice that you see right now, it should be about this size at this time of year, maybe thicker. Huh. Right now, this, this is how thick it is now. It makes changes on the climate change. So this is the thickness of this ice right now, what we're standing on. But 10 years ago, it should be around somewhere around here. It may not sound serious to you, but in November, it caused a life and death struggle in this community. Families here head out on this ice to hunt for daily meat supply. We always share what we cut. You don't Not sell only. it, you just share it. Yeah, we just share it. We don't sell it. We Come on. So you'll bring a big whale and you'll share it. Oh yeah, if it's gone just like that. That's Will we have whale tonight? We'll work on it. In the Arctic, subsidized groceries are at least five times the price of those in the south. Meat from the land is not only preferred for taste, it's necessary. Tonight is a feast to give thanks to God. Fresh seal, caribou, arctic char, parmigan, all enjoyed raw, on the floor, close to the land where it came from. The cause of the party? Two hunters returned home after a life-threatening encounter with climate change. 17-year-old Jupi Angatulak and his older uncle, Jimmy Nakulak, were hunting polar bear for the family diet when disaster struck. Their snowmobile broke down and the ice around them began to break. Help me God, that, that's all I thought. Jimmy would walk, then crawl on slushed floating ice pans. Uh, I know there was a path made for me. I, it was made by God. And here you, here you see uh, them hugging. The whole community came out, Jim, to say we are so thankful that you survived. The older uncle, Jimmy, and then Jupi in the blue coat there, being hugged by family, friends, relatives, and prayers just went on and on, thanking God. So, so what's the story? What happened to this, this kid? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> the, uh, it was exciting to be invited to come up there to Coral Harbor. But once we got there, Jupi's family, Jupi's father, was a little overwhelmed at all the international press coverage that wanted to know what happened to this boy as he floated 43 kilometers out on the ice. And they decided to hire an agent. And the agent is going to negotiate the story through either book or movie rights or television shows, some kind of thing. And, and Jupi's experience of what happened when he was alone on a 50 by 50 meter ice pan 
is going to be sold. So you know what happened to it, but you can't tell me. Well, how about if I tell you through the eyes of the rescuers? So we do know he was on the ice with three polar bears. That's well known. And he had to shoot one of Excuse the polar me? bears. With three polar bears? Three polar bears. Polar bears outnumber people out there. The climate change crisis that's happening is going to affect the lifestyle of the people more so than the polar bears. And you'll see in this next cl mm. clip coming up how vital these animals are. Look how far north this is. Okay, so here's the, um, here's the shot of where Coral Harbor is. You, you see Winnipeg way down on the bottom there. Right. You go all the way to the top of Hudson's Bay and that large island is Canada's eighth largest island. That's where we were. That's the very top as, as you enter into Canada's Arctic. And there's the, the typical house there. I can't, I can't. Uh, there's some light reflecting in the monitor. What's the name of the of the island? Coral Harbor. Coral. That's and the name of the island. That's Coral the island. Harbor. And there's only 800 people living on there. Uh -huh. That eastern part of the Arctic is is uh, more populated by polar bears than it is by people right there. So um, what happened was these these rescuers then took me to the small craft. First of all, a Hercules airplane followed them. And here's the craft that followed the Hercules airplane to rescue after being spotted by the airplane. This is the boat that rescued Jopi. They left five o'clock in the morning from here, from Coral Harbor. Apparently there was open water towards Jopi area. They, have, they took out with that boat, but there was still ice around. But there was open water for that boat to go down. That was a miracle. A miracle. Yeah, it's a miracle. <laughs> During the rescue, Coral Harbor had been called to prayer. Bobby Saviaka gathered hunters and searchers who prayed like this during the rescue. What Jupi and Jimmy went through helped us to understand God more about our prayers, about miracles, and get closer to God and understand Him more, how He works in all of us. All the men that was out there were praising God with all their voice. It was amazing. It was a miracle time. Jopi had been given to us a life. The man, they saw it, hallelujah, hallelujah. It was awesome. That's how much God have helped us out. 